Hello my friends, welcome to the season of season comfy cozy hot chocolate hello present Christmas thanks! Because of the season of season comfy cozy hot chocolate hello present Christmas thanks, there are a few more social obligations in my life than usual, and because the only skill I was born with was procrastination, I decided to deviate from my usual content and draw something very wholesome and comforting and not relevant to any of the other things that have brought people to my channel. Actually, this is not an uncommon fallback for me when I'm particularly anxious but still feel like I need to draw, drawing from reference is a nice way that I can sharpen my art skills without using too much brain power. What I have done in the past is take two pictures, usually one of a little creature like a frog or something similar, and mix it with some sort of food item. This has bred such beautiful creations like the poison tart frog, the strawberry cheese snake, the spaghettamander, and the frog. Now, this current combination is one I've had in the back of my mind for a while, and it stemmed from seeing this picture. And of course, I could have drawn a mothmallow, like a marshmallow moth, uh, but I said, why not go one step further? And that's how we get to our beloved Smurf. Because we are working from reference here, I have the two pictures I was drawing from pasted into the original file, and then I just go in and quickly outline the shapes. Composition-wise, there's not a lot going on, so the sketch is very basic. Most of the work comes in with getting the textures right for the drawings, but I perched the little moth buddy to be climbing onto this more, and we're pretty quickly moving on to the coloring stage. I color pick directly from the picture of the s'more, but for a little more color continuity, instead of also color picking for the moth from the reference picture, I decided to make the moth the same color as the marshmallow. Uh, plus, having a somewhat limited color palette can help with bringing a whole composition together and just making it feel more uniform. So as far as blocking in this drawing, it's pretty clear already that it's a moth on a s'more. And everything left is kind of just texture, fuzzy moth fur, gritty graham cracker, and burnt marshmallow. On top of that, the entire drawing is sort of gray and brown, which in my opinion are not super entertaining colors to shade, but to be honest, the lighting is very direct anyways on the subject and there aren't really any big sections to shade in a drastically different color. So while I try to get my bearings on how exactly to tackle the graham cracker texture, I spend some time refining the larger shapes in the drawing. So getting the lumpy details in the marshmallow correct, making sure the right corner of the chocolate piece is warped from having been melted, adding some warm coloration where the marshmallow has been toasted, and making the edge of the graham cracker look crumbly. After that much procrastinating, I finally decide to give in and work just a little bit on the graham cracker texture. It was a lot of trial and error mixed with maybe a little bit too much optimism. I had already marked out where the little graham cracker holes were and started adding the most highlighted points in the drawing. I also wanted to add the crumbly layers and things that are on the edge of the graham crackers, and I think I did it all with the same soft round marker brush, adding depth with color variation, and of course brightening it up a bit with the color adjustment, and it's just a lot of pushing and pulling with colors to try to get the right look. I would say the easiest part of this drawing was definitely the chocolate. It's got a very nice, mostly matte smooth texture with just a little bit of gloss where it's melted. The darks on the chocolate were very dark and there were not a bunch of little annoying, horrible crumbly bits to work with. So I start working on the moth because I am still not brave enough to color a graham cracker, and I do some adjusting and cleaning up of the features, uh, but not as sharply as I did with the s'more portion of the drawing because the moth which I took reference from is a very fluffy Venezuelan poodle moth. Or is it? Actually, this picture which I used as reference has been floating around the internet for a while, advertising itself as the unrealistically fluffy Venezuelan poodle moth. But what it actually is, is a felted recreation of the Bombex Mori, or a Chinese silkworm moth, featured in the Itami City Museum of Insects in Japan. At the time of the drawing, I didn't realize I was drawing from an excellent, beautifully done felted recreation, but now I know and now you know. The real Venezuelan poodle moth actually has been pretty elusive. So elusive in fact that only one person has been able to find and photograph it, Dr. Arthur Anker, in 2009, despite many continued searches for the moth. There is plenty of speculation surrounding this Venezuelan poodle moth, whether it's its own species, a strange wild bombix mori that somehow found its way from its native regions of Asia to Venezuela, or just a weirdly complex internet hoax. 
at any rate, the felted bombix mori is plenty cute for me to be happy that I chose it as a reference, uh, which makes this drawing technically the only one of my little creatures in food drawings that wasn't actually a real creature in food. Ah, uh, but that can just be a secret we can keep between us. As you can clearly see, I have decided to somewhat brave the top texture of the graham cracker. Uh, this was just a lot of small pen strokes in varying shades of brown, with darkest browns at the center of the graham cracker holes and highlights on the rim. I do think that using brighter highlights for the top of the graham cracker really solidified that shiny honey sheen <laughs> that graham crackers tend to have. And for having been so afraid of dealing with the texture, with a little bit of patience, I think I ended up with a result that I am pretty proud of. And also, if any of of you are like, oh, she deleted her references and now she's working from memory. Amazing. That is not the case. Um, I just pulled the pictures up on different screens so that I could look more closely at the tiny details and also have the smorth fill up the entire canvas nicely. Also, speaking of working from references, if anybody tells you that working using a reference is cheating, I feel like this is a pretty good video of showing just how much work can still be put into a drawing, even if you are almost one to one recreating the same scene. Nothing about looking at a picture of a graham cracker is going to suddenly imbue me with the power to know exactly how to replicate the texture in digital art. It is still a learning process. So I'm finally stepping back and realizing that I have pushed past the ugly stage in the drawing for the graham cracker, which really is one of the main focuses of the drawing, which is probably why I spent so long on it and also so long avoiding it. The marshmallow is only going to have so much texture to show, the chocolate is mostly smooth, and the moth is its own problem that at this point in the drawing I'm still in the denial stage about having to work on. As I said before, I've been doing this combo of creature and food for a while. Um, it actually stemmed from a genuine interest in wanting to draw food, very much inspired by Miri Illust on Instagram, who draws the most beautiful looking food art. Um, their art style is very realistic looking, but with a thin dark lining and lots of sparkles, and I just wanted to recreate that look, but with my own twist. and creatures in food suddenly became one of my most comforting of comfort draws. I started drawing in the burnt bubble texture on the marshmallows, which I have to be honest I was very intimidated by. Because of the little burn marks on the graham cracker and the chocolate, and not just the marshmallows, I assumed the s'more was toasted with some sort of torch, and I wanted to get the visual depth of the little bubbled out burn bits and the gradual gradient of the toasty, very lightly brown parts of the marshmallow. I was very worried it would come out looking very soot stained instead of toasted, so I blended out the little brown edges, added more and more of the dark torched bits, starting with the biggest most obvious dark spots followed by the little tinier bubbled bits. I also introduced a brighter white into the drawing to emphasize the highlights in the marshmallow a little better and give it more shape instead of just being flat. And if I do say so myself, this s'more is coming together very nicely, especially when the screen is zoomed out. From a distance, this is probably one of the nicest s'mores I have ever drawn. Though, to be fair, I don't think I've drawn many s'mores in my lifetime. So while I continue to futz with the various details in the s'more and procrastinate on working on our moth friend here, we can chat a little and not about the weird internet rabbit holes of whether or not a particular type of moth exists. How is your holiday season going for you? Although I know not all the holidays celebrated in November and December are universal, most of my viewers are from North America, although there are a couple viewers from elsewhere, other countries and things, which is just kind of wild to think about. I mean, in a cool way, but also hard to grasp the full understanding of. Anyways, I know holidays can be rough for a lot of reasons, which is why I'm trying, but also failing at maintaining a semi-consistent schedule of release during this time, because whether it's family, friends, foods, religion, history, weather, health, there's all sorts of things that could make this season difficult for you to enjoy, and you're welcome to hang around my channel where I try to draw mostly wholesome things and talk about weird stuff, like moths. <laughs> and if you have no complaints about the holiday season, you're welcome to hang around waiting for my chaotic video release schedule to straighten out, or come back and binge watch when holiday obligations aren't taking up most of your time. 
Either way, I am so glad you decided to spend some time with me, and of all the things I'm thankful for this year, definitely close to the top of the list, if not at the top, I am so very thankful for such kind people like you supporting me and helping me to achieve my dreams. I think I have probably the nicest comment section on YouTube right now, and I'm so lucky that I just, I'm, I'm able to go in and read all the comments. All of you have been far too kind. And I truly am so happy that you have decided to stick around and watch this little corner of the internet grow. Alright, so back to the art. We have our little moth buddy getting some shape here. I use a lot of varying shades, a lot like I did with the graham cracker to be honest. And I'm blocking in the basic colors but with little short fluffy strokes instead of long sharp ones to sort of mimic the soft look. And I have to say I really enjoy how the little point of the moth's head kind of looks like a little happy smile. It wasn't intentional at all, and that was just how the shading looked in the picture. It just makes him look very enthused to be on this more. I think with the moth, I could have been a little more bold with the darkest and lightest shades, and I should have added some little gloss to his eyes, but because the reference picture didn't have any, I didn't add any. Maybe that should have been the first thing to tip me off, that it was a felt recreation instead of an actual bug. But bug eyes are kind of funky reflection-wise, so let's just pretend it's fine. I never actually am fully satisfied with how the moth turns out. I do a lot of little tiny pushing and pulling of color, but on something as soft and fluffy with a lot of tiny hairs, I just wasn't really sure how to define any of the shapes. I decided at this point to take a tip from Devin L. Kurtz, who does a lot of modern fantasy crossover art as well as excellent Avatar The Last Airbender art. Uh, the one I was thinking of in particular is this Momo and Katara art, where you can just see his fluffy little hairs glowing in the light. So I switch to my trusty fine liner brush and start making little tiny short hairs on the moth. Of course, this art piece that Devin has made has a lot more dramatic lighting, which makes the little tiny stray hair strands look cooler, but I think it was a nice detail that I would like to keep trying to learn how to incorporate in future drawings of fluffy things. At this point, I'm not sure if it's better or worse, he's just kind of starting to look a little bit bulbous, kind of like the Ghostbusters Marshmallow Man, but I guess marshmallows are thematic with the whole s'more concept, so in the words of our good friend Bob Ross, it's just a happy little accident. I finally accept the drawing as is and put the little iconic dark line around the edge. Not only does this sort of look cool, it allows me to create the illusion of a bright white highlight around the edge of the drawing by overdrawing the edge ever so slightly in some choice locations. A process which I think looks super satisfying sped up like this. So to make it match my previous creature in food arts, I want to draw little hearts and sparkles around the edge. The whole drawing is pretty neutral, and I couldn't decide what color I wanted to use for the sparkles, so I just started swatching. But then, I thought the swatches just looked kinda neat on their own, so I added a few more in and left it as it was. And after just redoing and redoing and redoing my signature, which I should be more consistent about doing on more of my drawings, I decided to go in and add the last few touches of some bright white highlights, because why not? And with that, we can finish up the last of this drawing. May I present to you, Smorth, here to bring you good vibes for the holidays. I love how the s'more turned out. Moth, as I said, leaves a little bit to be desired. Um, it's hard to have such a shiny food piece and then a fuzzy matte subject, but it's okay, he's a good boy and he's happy eating his s'more. What a video! We had sentimental moments, we had weird internet rabbit hole history moments, and we had me saying graham crackers a few too many times. And now the word s'more doesn't even feel real to me. I hope you didn't mind all the weird rambling in the middle of the art stuff, and also if anyone finds updates on the Venezuelan poodle moth, please let me know, I am so invested now. Again, thank you so much for all the support, I am so grateful for you, and wouldn't be here motivated to keep putting up these silly little drawings if it weren't for you watching my videos or leaving such nice comments. And if I made you hungry for s'mores, I'm sorry. I would probably go make a s'more right now, except, well, for one, I don't have any graham crackers just lying around my house, and for two, I just have a ludicrous amount of pie and cheesecake, among other Thanksgiving dinner leftovers that my parents sent home with us, that I, I have no idea what the two of us are going to do with. That being said, I hope you have a lovely day, and I will do my best to see you Friday, like I'm supposed to, and like I plan to. Will I be able to fight the procrastination this week? 
Who knows? Not me. <laughs>